centering, putting aside all thoughts, worries, concerns, always doing that before we enter prayer and enter the altar. Mm. Setting aside all the stuff of the world. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Mother God, in this moment, we open our hearts, our minds, our souls, our being. We open ourselves up to receive your love, your blessings. In this moment, we become channels, just as you've asked us to be. Not channels that are detached from the source, but channels who become filled with and become more of the source of that which we would once have channeled. In this moment, we call upon the light, the consciousness, the power, and the presence of God to pour upon us through that holy feminine presence called the Shekinah, the holy divine presence of God, the Holy Spirit. And by whatever other name, it pours in and through us, fills our heart until our cup runneth over, and it pours into the lives of everyone we touch or encounter. We feel ourselves filled with the presence, filled with that river of light that flows through us, that brings us to whatever and wherever we need to be as a servant of God. We take that river everywhere with us. We bless everyone we touch with it, and we do whatever is asked of us to do in service to each other, to God, and in the name of love. Most holy God, we're here in this moment, the sacred moment, the sacred place, gathered to celebrate and honor and worship with open hearts, open minds, and our hands stretched to the heaven. We are forever grateful for your grace and love. And all this that was shared is true. It's the truth of God. It's the will of God. All we need now to do is step out of the way and not block or inhibit this from being our truth as well. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs> Please join me in reading our mission statement, which you can find on the front of your bulletin. Together we say... Unity of Sedona is a spiritual center that nurtures the paths of both healing and spirituality as a means of awakening the inner Christ through the practice and development of love, peace, joy, and abundance. And now for our sacred reading. From A Course in Miracles. Today, I will accept the truth about myself, and I will arise in glory and allow the light that shines within me to shine throughout the world today. I bring the world glad tidings of salvation, which I hear as Father Mother speaks to me. I behold the world that Jesus saw and would have me see as well, because Christ is in my eyes and in my ears. Dearest God, I come to you as your beloved daughter or son, and as my true self as well. And so it is. And so it is. How's everyone feeling? Good. I was just asked, what's the name of today's talk? And I was like, oh, 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 oh. You know, it's the linear stuff sometimes. Um, uh, uh, let's go with this. No, no, wait. You know, so I give them that, and they're announcing it to the people watching over the internet. Um, and, and I think, because what I think we're doing today is, it's a tricky terminology, because at first I was thinking, blending the two questions that were asked in the bookstore, love, r romance, you know, and yet Christ consciousness and our relationship with God. So I was saying, you know, relationship with Christ and then I was walking in here and I said wait no that sounds almost Christian so no um, so just loving Christ I'll leave it at that 
Um, so to get us started, um, I, I want to remind you all, at any time you can ask, and the people online as well, you can ask for a specific topic because it just kind of it, it channels anyway, you know, whatever the topic. I, I, I believe in that. I just We just set self aside and allow the truth, you know, as we can understand it as a collective. And a lot of people say, God, you know, this is just so weird because I was just struggling with this or that. It was speaking directly to me. That, that's how spirit can work. And some of us think, well, it's probably a coincidence. He just happened to be talking about a topic that uh, is of interest to me lately. No, it's also sometimes very specific. Try to understand that getting in the zone with God, with Christ as a consciousness, is so multidimensional in its experience and its, in its effects that it can actually be talking to a hundred and something people at the same time and be giving them all something different uniquely. That's how multidimensional it can be. To one, I can say, you know, abracadabra, and one person, it's everything they needed to hear romantically. Another person, they felt downloads of healing. It's all of that. And that's what is going to be happening more in the world. Less and less linear, less and less tunnel visioned, and more and more, whoa. Because that's what the Garden of Eden looks like, is, and feels like. We were told, in the garden you have everything you need. Well then, why isn't this kind of communication part of the communication in the garden? Where I get to hear everything I need to hear at any given moment. <clears throat> Not just in the linear way. I used to, you know, you put on a song, a radio, and you go, wow, that song was perfect for today. That's really cool, but take that times a million. Take it times a billion, you know? where it's not just, I played a song and wasn't that an interesting coincidence. Coincidences start to give way when you start to raise consciousness. They start to give way uh, from the skeptical coincidence, like, nah, it's just a coincidence, to, whoa, what a cool coincidence. But that gives way to synchronicity, which is more like conscious. Can you shut that door, please? Thanks. <clears throat> which is more like conscious coincidences. Synchronicities happen when I'm learning to be in sync, but with what? Well, with my beloved. We can finish each other's sentences. Well, that's, that's nothing. I mean, is that as far as you want to go? So synchronicities grow and grow, and you pretty, you know, pretty soon enough you realize, I'm in touch with everything. Like, I'm sitting here, not even the speaker, just sitting in the group, and things are downloading answers, insights, support, because we're in this together. It's a groove that we get into. <clears throat> so multi-dimensional experience. A prayer happens and all of a sudden in that prayer, I don't know why, I just happened to think of somebody that I knew about 20 years ago, because spirit is now weaving into your brain, allowing things to percolate up for you to look at so you can release them to a new level. It, nothing becomes happenstance anymore. <clears throat> now, if this is somewhat new to you, you're going to look a little freakish to some people. When you go, God, I was just thinking about someone, and so give me a minute, i got to take a minute to kind of process that. They're going to be like, God, you overthink things, it's just a coincidence. That's because they're the, the part of humanity that's sick and wants to keep all of that buried. And we become the people that say, open it, let's let it all out so that something new can come in. But the world that wants it all to be buried isn't going to really dig that or support that. And I'm not saying that just because this happens, you should be an inconvenience on everybody and start, you know, in the middle of a, you know, you're a, a, a fifth grade teacher and you say, hold it a minute, class, I've got some issues to process here. You know? <laughs> that would probably not be the best thing. But the synchronicities, the synchronicities, you know, it's growing and growing and it's happening. And, you know, and I've talked about this for a billion years, you know, in talks and workshops and all that. But... Having come to Sedona and working with Unity of Sedona, it's not just something I'm telling folks it's going to happen because I could see it and I could tell about it. Now there's a group of people here every week that are experiencing it with me, you know, and, and everybody online as well. You, you'd be amazed. The reports we got from last week, people are watching from Tibet, from South America, Central America, Sweden. I mean, it's bizarre, like beautifully bizarre. I mean that in a good way. It's Wonderful, like they're from everywhere, Scotland, Ireland, England, because something wonderful is happening. Something wonderful, something multidimensional, and it's actually sort of initiating right through in this place right here. 
Not, not just Sedona, not just Sedona. Because if we all, if all the populace of Sedona walk and moved out of Sedona, Sedona as a place isn't going to actually be able to do it in the multiples that we're doing it. Because Sedona is, is sort of like a magnifying glass. It just sits here, ready to magnify whatever somebody brings to it. But if we don't bring anything to it, it doesn't transform the world of itself. It's not like that tree is there going, man, I can't wait to change the world. It's just sitting there. It's a mirror of our consciousness. It's just a, a thing there. Even the mountains and even the vortexes, they're actually there to be of service to us. And not in an arrogant way do we say that. But we have to take responsibility and not go, gee, you know, Sedona does this and Sedona does that. It's our consciousness. Sedona doesn't bring up all your stuff if you don't have stuff. <laughs> Sedona doesn't multiply your consciousness if you don't want to multiply your consciousness. Stop crediting the rocks. I mean, aren't you, can you really? Oh, but the rocks are amazing. So you're telling me you're not even more evolved than a rock? Well, you know, power to you. But I would just suggest you try it out. The rocks, Buddha was telling us, Jesus was telling us, the rocks, the trees, they're all in service to us. But an arrogant person would take that one way and an enlightened person takes it another. We don't look at it as a separate thing. Trees, rocks, serve me. We recognize they're a reflection of. And if I become a really great person, these things will appreciate what I've done. That's how it's done. See, it's, it's not I'm above. It's the more I work on myself, the more they're grateful. And as has been said, in A Course in Miracles and even in the description of Buddha meditating for prolonged periods, the trees will bow to shade you when it's hot outside. You know? Even the streams will, will, will change direction to bring you water if you're thirsty. I mean, it's, it's sort of, you know, metaphor, but at the same time it means all that you could ever want or need is going to be available. So we've got people watching from all over, and we're part of this. We're reaching out to everybody. And there are other groups and churches that are very inspirational, reaching out to more and more people because of these technologies. If the technologies ended, would I still be doing what I'm doing? Absolutely. I was doing it for 35 years or more before we were going on, you know, live this and that. So, so this is who I am. It's not what I do. But then we have to all ask ourselves, when you go to a spiritual center like this, when you tune in on, on the live feed, do you do it because it's something you're doing or because it's what you are? This is all I can imagine doing. There are other people that come up with all kinds of things. Oh, I've got to take my, my such and such, my partner, we're going to go watch a movie. You can watch a movie anytime. Has this ever become a priority where this is your food? You know, Well, we were going to go to Unity of Sedona or we were going to have this you know, spiritual event, but you know, we just decided to just have lunch instead. And we'll just stare at each other. I, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> you know, then you will die on this planet. You will die. And all you will have had is a little more romance. And that's not going to add up to a whole lot on the other side. Trust me. Only consciousness matters on the other side. If all you got was more codependence, it doesn't really do much for you. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> And we always have to tell the folks that are watching live, and think about this, this is funny. If you ever lose, if we ever lose connection, stay tuned, okay, stay tuned and we'll be coming back on. And when I thought about that announcement, I thought, that's for all of us in the room too. Listen, if at all we ever disconnect, stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment, you know. <laughs> and so, so to everyone, it's about consciousness. It's about this evolution of consciousness. Right. I, I've had for a while the, the, the public Facebook page, but now we've made it a, a one private one, Friends of Michael Murdad, so people can kind of connect with that and get a little more involved with each other, asking questions and giving advice. This is, there's this whole growing, blossoming consciousness. And, <clears throat> and I see it like last week, in the last few weeks, we talked a little bit about um, in a word, wordplay, in, in a sense, it's wordplay. We were talking about uh, um, the realities and illusions of life and of consciousness, and then I was talking about how people have this relationship with God or Jesus or whatever, and what does that all really mean? 
Even people that have an issue with this concept of Jesus, they think of it as like some sort of like, well, that's, that's a Christian term. It's not a Christian term. Somebody on the Facebook thing, they sent me a message and said, you know, Michael, I, I love the, this thing you got going on and people connecting, but I have to tell you, I'm, I'm not religious. And my reply was, neither is God. You know, if you think about it, God was before religion. God's not like, oh, thank God there's religion. Now I can worship myself. Um, <laughs> we're not talking about religion here. And I know it sounds irreverent and all that, but work on it, okay? You might want to look at whatever buttons that pushes if they're there. But um, the irreverence is not an irreverence like a disrespect of anything good. The irreverence I have that seems to be there at times is about laughing about the things that are no longer necessary. It's about laughing at ourselves, about how we make a religion of everything. The sacred cows, some people call it. You know, and getting back to just a relationship with God. And I mentioned a couple weeks ago, look at the, how many different names people have to use for God because they think God is an old religious term. It's just a word that's kind of all-encompassing. So you can say, you know, the I am, if you must, that's fine. But people keep going further and further. God, then El I am, and Yahweh, and Jehovah, and Elohim, and this, and, and then they start down, we go down, and down. some, you know, Lord, but then it keeps going down, and pretty soon it's almighty light in the sky, you know, and it's just <laughs> dropping. For, all those names put, put distance between us and God. And all I'm saying is, Why? Look at all the attempts to create distance and just choose to say, no, this is ridiculous. The Shekinah, the Holy Spirit, just try to find a name that's right for you that is as close to the real name of God as possible. Try not to personalize it or humanize it too much. The ultimate guy, the cool, the, the man upstairs. Remember that one? The man upstairs. Do you understand that that's, that's humanizing it? it? Does God care? No. But it, it's, it affects our ability to tune in to the power. Because even though they're just names, I said a couple weeks ago, even though Jesus is just a name, he's a person, he's a soul, just like you and I. He had lifetimes, and he woke up to the Christ, the I am presence of God within. Not just a little bit of wisdom, not just kind of like, I awoke and I can see through the illusion. I am awake, the name Buddha, I am awake. It's not just that. It's not just... Wow, I'm, I'm wise. He's not just, I should go to Greece because I'll hang out with the philosophers because I am a good philosopher. That's no, none of that. Jesus said, wow, complete divine awareness. Not insights, complete awareness. And he says in A Course in Miracles, names are just names. God, Elohim, Jesus, you know, whatever you, you, you want to call anything. The fence post. I mean, they're just words, they're illusions. But in this dimension, in this realm of seeming illusion, he says, because I woke up, I became a symbol of your awakening as well. So if you use my name, a name, you know, it's just a name, and yet, if you use my name, it has a unique power. So don't be afraid to use that name, Christ. If it's too weird for you to do the Jesus Christ, that's okay, because we all know. I mean, pretty much everybody in this room and probably everybody watching live uh, on, on the internet, the fact that you would even be attracted to watching some of this, there's a good odds that you've been monk, you know, priest, nun, struggled with, wrestled with, you know, burned at the stake by some of these people. I mean, their chances are you've had some weird experience with Christianity or any form of religion that's like that, you know? So we've got some charges. We understand that. Jesus understands that as well. Yeah, it's a tough one, but he's still saying, but let's heal that. Come, when you come back to being able to say God instead of holy fence post, you, you, you know, and, and humanizing it so much, you're actually healing your relationship with God. Well, I don't have any issues with God. Yeah, you actually do. You just don't know. We don't know it because it's not a conscious relationship that we dialogue with every day. But when Jesus... You know, the commandments are telling us, you know, um, about the Lord thy God is one. You know, love the Lord with all thy, you know, mind, soul, strength, etc. That's the Old Testament. When Jesus comes about, he says, love each other as I have loved you. 
Is that like different or in addition to love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, soul, body, you know, whatever, right? So the Old Testament saying love God. Jesus says love one another. Why? Because what he was saying is your relationship with God is mirrored in your relationship with each other. You don't know how to rate your relationship with God. You don't really know how. You don't know what you feel with God because it's so, so deeply subconscious, unconscious to us. So Jesus is saying, that's going to be too much for you to admit. It's, even if you're a, a Christian, a, a, a Muslim or whatever, you're going to want to believe that your relationship with God is wonderful and unique. But Jesus gave us a psychological test to know how your relationship is with God. And that is, how are you doing with others? Well, my relationship with God is great. It's with others that it's all messed up because humans are just so screwed up. <laughs> but he's telling you, you will know your relationship with God by your relationship with others. So how are you doing with it? So you sit back and you go, well, okay. In general, okay, I, but I have a bit of a charge with males or with females. You just, you just basically admitted that you have an issue with the male aspect of God or the female aspect of, with God, of God. You see? You see what I'm saying? If you don't like nature and it's just a, a, an inconvenience and you like living in the city and all the stimulus... Nature is a reflection of the divine mother, which means I have an issue with the female aspect of God. All you have to do is look at your relationship with all things and you'll know how you're doing in your relationship with the all. It seems too abstract, but that's we made it that way so we don't have to own it. But responsible people know how the mirror works and we can't hide anymore. So you don't have to say your relationship with God is perfect or that it's terrible. Just say, I'm working on it. How? Because I'm working on it with everyone. Every, every time I learn not to use and abuse a woman, I know that I'm respecting the Divine Mother. Every time I know not to be triggered by masculine energy, um, control, or, or um, you know the, the authoritative kinds of things on earth, then I know I'm coming to peace with the Father aspect of God. Is that all making sense? Got to bring it all to peace. So it's all just this reflection. And we realize, uh, but, but Jesus, what role does he play? And, it, you know, isn't he just another prophet? He's not just another prophet. The Christ, that is the, the human that thought they separated from God, remembered that they cannot be separate. Now they're one with God. So Jesus is the person. Christ is the remembrance. So by all means, call in the power of the remembrance when you pray. Call in the power of the remembrance. Affirm the power of the, of the remembrance. Because re, to remember means there is no sickness. In the name of Christ, you are healed. As soon as I say those words, even me, to, you know, teaching, I can, I can hear the televangelists out there. In the name of Christ, and, and yet it's all hypocrisy. In the name of Christ, I hope my congregation doesn't find out that I'm in the mean, you know, hiring prostitutes to visit my house. You know, it's like, wow, it, it's so twisted. But in the name of Christ, so it, it gets, I'm saying, you know, when you, when even I stand here and say the words in the name of Christ, it's so easy to hear those memories of the misuses of that, the Jesus. And then, oh my God, people burned people at the stake in the name of Jesus. Okay. And Jesus was never there on, in support of those kinds of people. Was there when people were hurting, the people being tortured. Not seeing them as victims or, or, or whatever. Seeing them as divine beings. But it, with them because they were calling out it, with prayer. But some of those people that got tortured swore to themselves. Whoever this Jesus guy is that these people are torturing me in the name of, I want nothing to do with that guy. And then they live lifetimes and they come back as agnostic, they come back as atheists, they come back as intellectuals or any version of, um, I, I've got it right here, I got all that I need right here in my own brain, I don't need any of that religious stuff. And that's because of the wounds and the hurts. So whether we caused harm to people in the name of or whether we received harm, our job is to drop it and say, I'm born again. Not born again Christian kind of thing, but I'm a new self. The me that was burned in the fire is now a phoenix, rising again. The me that burned others, that was ridiculous, and I'm born again. To come to a place of loving those people, and then 
How will I know if that ever happened? Here's an example. If you attend this service, this, this experience here, and you find that you have at some time in your life been maybe more fundamental and maybe you did cause harm and, and torture people. Let's just pretend that happened. You don't remember it, but let's just say on some level you know. And you attend here today, but at the same time, somebody else, right, maybe sitting right next to you or maybe on the other side of the room, was one of those people you've burned at the stake. And yet we're all singing these songs, you know, the age of Aquarius or, or whatever it else, whatever else it happens to be. We're all singing these songs. Do you understand that that's a sign of a coming together? The two of you are now singing the same songs. It's a sign of something amazing happening, but most of us don't see it because we're not awake. But you need to be able to try it. Just be awake and go, wow, this is weird. I felt a little triggered by this type of, that type of male or female, but I'm singing with them now as though the, the labels and the names are falling away because they are, which means I'm healing and thank God that that's happening. And sometimes it's even more pronounced, like they happen to be sitting right next to you. You know, you're sitting, you're, you're, you, you, you're wearing your, your, you know, the tie and, and suit because you're used to going to church, let's say, looking like that. But then you've got some total hippie with, you know, tie-dye shirt and beads uh, next to you. How perfect is that? <laughs> Didn't I burn you before? <laughs> Yeah, you actually did. How do we know? Because I'm annoyed by you in your outfit, and I'm annoyed by you in your outfit. And the outfits represent our behaviors of the past. And then, you know, what would be amazing is this person to loosen the tie, take off the tie, watch the hippie put it around their head and tie it up and wear it here. You know, and the hippie take off their beads and put them over the guy with the suit. And, and I'm not dissing anybody's wardrobe, so don't start looking around the room. I'm just saying, that's, that's how it starts to, to change. You know, I have this, I remember graduating from high school. And, you know, and they give you these caps. Well, I, I, I can't even wear that. If I wear the I didn't even like school. Why would I wear the hat, you know? Um, and then they give you this, this thing, like a, a, a band, and then at the end, you know, it tells you your class, in, you know, year or whatever. I, I wasn't doing this to be a renegade. It's, it's what felt like me. I took the, the thing around my neck. I took it off and draped it over my ear and got rid of the cap. And, you know, all of a sudden, I'm wearing it my way. It's me. This is me. And again, I'm not trying to diss anybody or anything. It's just... This is me. So when we can learn to, to find ourselves, and, and instead of the reaction, I wear this because I don't like establishment, would be a reaction. I'm going to dress like this because I am the establishment. Now what you have is duality. So how can this guy go ahead and adapt, you know, adopt that piece and this person adopt that piece? It's kind of cool. When the man becomes the woman, the woman becomes a man. Jesus describes it in one of the lost books that uh, you know, when they talk about how do we know when we're getting it? He's saying, when the man becomes a woman, the woman becomes a man. He doesn't mean sex changes. He's talking about integrating all these seemingly separated parts. There is no separation. Man embrace and integrate the woman. Woman embrace and integrate the man. And we went, okay. Would you marry me? And he didn't mean it literally. He meant integrate the male and female within yourself. And besides that, some people go, well, that's nice, but I want a partner. Well, you would be safer as a partner if you could integrate your own male and female first. Bring them an integrated person. If you don't bring an integrated person, you have to, by default, bring a needy person. Because if I don't have it, I need it. So if I'm not integrated with it, I need it. Hi, nice to meet you. You should be like, oh, God, one of those. When somebody, you know, nice to meet you, I'm needy. I'm needy, nice to, I have a business card, look, needy, you know? Call me, oh, I will, 1-800-N-E-E-D, <laughs> needy me, you know? Call now, guaranteed relationship for a while, and then just more hurt, more confusion, more layers. We have to integrate, yeah, right? I don't know where this stuff comes from. But it just, we, we become whole people. Even if you're in a partnership, it's not like you have to be out of one to do this, but in or out of a partnership to become more and more integrated. How, how can I do that? Well, ask. Ask inside. Ask the Spirit of God to help you, but also ask. 
If Michael was saying that the outside world, nature for example, is part of the divine feminine, then maybe my ability to walk gently out in nature is having a relationship with the divine feminine. It's one symptom of it. I still have to then be able to sit down and feel it within me, or it's still an external thing, right? And, and if I have charges with masculine things, I, you know, how can I dance within that? And they're all subtle. I mean, sometimes they're not, but they're often subtle. When I come to Unity of Sedona, and they tell me you're just going to teach, but before I knew it, they're saying, can you write job descriptions? I'm like, I've never even had a job. How am I going to write a job description? <laughs> but that was where I was being called, not by these people making me do this, that was also a calling for me to be able to see if I could integrate more of that masculine uh, organizational stuff. So I got on my computer with my famous two-finger typing and figured out how to do it, and it's worked swimmingly. <laughs> you know, It's worked beautifully. The job descriptions and whatever, because I asked also, what do you guys... How would you like, what would you like on your job description? You know? <laughs> that always makes it easy. But it also makes it collaboration. And collaboration is the male and female again. See, there's a way just to see. How can I serve? How can I help? You're the spiritual leader. And so we go out to do some weeding and I'll say, so uh, where do you think we should weed? You see? And have somebody who goes, Re really? Um, well, um, I thought you were, no. Where, where, do you, where would you like me to start? Well, maybe you can start over here. Okay, you know, and start doing it. Take the, that which was the masculine, the leader, and turn it into the feminine. How can I serve? And then you've integrated it, just in that one example. How can I serve? If you find masculinity, then also ask how can you serve? And then the masculine gives way to the feminine. And then the feminine has to recognize, oh, in this moment I'm being asked to step up. Good, now you're embracing the masculine. And then this terminology, masculine and feminine, that eventually fades and you don't even call it anything anymore. You know, it's just a oneness. It's just an integration. People will still maybe ask about whether it's this or that and it becomes like foreign conversation. When people ask me questions along those lines, sometimes I have to sit and what answer is going to kind of work in their vernacular, in their, in their you know, human speak? You know, how, how do I explain this? Because it... It's not in my mind to define it anymore as this and that becoming merged with something else. It just kind of happens. And that's the alchemical wedding. That's the alchemical marriage of consciousness. There's, um, but this charge, how can you ever plan on embracing God if you have a charge on the name of God? How can you ever become the Christ if you have issues with the name of Christ? Well, because I'm going to call it something else. Well, you know, then they'll give you a padded room on the other side for you to sit in until you process that stuff. Because you can't do without being. You can't do the enlightenment when the name of enlightenment ultimately is the Christ. In consciousness, there's God and God created Christ. That's the hierarchy, let's call it. God, Christ. After that, you have everything from angels, ascended masters, you know, light beings and down to humans. So which of those do, do I want to pray to? Well, I'm going to pray to, uh, you know, this beautiful ascended master. His name's Xerox. Um, <laughs> and he li lives on a planet called IBM. <laughs> and, and that's the being. Well, that's good. But on the, on the list, that would be up over about here. Light beings, higher dimensional beings. You know, above that, there are ascended master angels, Christ, why would you want to settle at all? Just go for the whole enchilada, man. Go, just go for the awakening. I am that I am. I'm, I am the Christ as God created me to be. So really, I'm, 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 Jesus, you don't sit and compare Jesus. You know, I bet Jesus could be Buddha up. You know, you don't do that <laughs> childlike silliness. My Savior is greater than your Savior. You know, that's just really infantile. It's... Understand who they are. Understand the difference. Different names. Wise, philosopher, um, philanthropist. Those are all beautiful names. They're human names about great states of being. Christ is not. Christ is a divine name. So we've got to grow comfortable with the idea of using that name. I one time was invited <clears throat> to go um, years ago. Um, probably, God, it must be 25 years ago, 
I was invited to go and speak to a group. I hadn't met them, they hadn't met me, but I was invited to go to speak to a group on Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. And you had all these people, their names are like Elohim and Indigo, their names are real cool and cosmic. And so there's this table of people, and they get together once a month because they're like the, the council of light workers on Shasta. And so I was invited as a, as a surprise kind of a guest, but so they don't know I'm coming. But I show up, and I sit in the circle, and they start introducing themselves. I am Eloha, you know, and I, I do some healing work. And then somebody else, my name is Indigo, and I, and I integrate the powers of this planet and that planet. The next one, I'm a Venusian, and I channel <laughs> beings from Venus. And they're going around the room, and it gets to me. <laughs> my name is John the Harbinger, and I'm a Christian, and I'm here to convert all of you. <laughs> you should have seen there was this <laughs> I go nah <laughs> let's shake things up a little you know what the heck um, <laughs> so because let, let's laugh at ourselves Listen, look at you guys I'm indigo well I'm beyond indigo I'm this I'm be you know it's like wow it's just Always trying to one-up, spiritual one-upmanship. And to be able to say, well, let's throw a wrench in this, you know. <laughs> so, our struggles, even with the words Holy Spirit, there's some of us that go, wait a minute, was, isn't that kind of a Catholic term? Is it really? I, I don't remember seeing the copyright on that. <laughs> Holy Spirit means the Divine Mother. She comes comfort. She, she you know, that's... The, you know, the Divine Mother, she embraces. She says, even though you think you've left heaven and your father, I'm going to be your mother to take care of you while your father seems to be at work, <laughs> off at work. I'm going to be with you always. And Jesus says, even though I'm leaving, I'm still leaving you with the Comforter. Who's that? The Holy Spirit. What is that? It's, it's been talked about before even Jesus' time. The Shekinah, the Divine Mother. She's with you. I'm leaving you with your mother. The mother aspect of God. And unfortunately, the religions didn't want to create that sense of the female there. Because it's not gender. Don't get me wrong. It's not gender. But even in A Course in Miracles, it refers to the Holy Spirit as he. But that's because he's using the words that people are used to in religion. Because A Course in Miracles, one of its purposes was to break the trance of religion. So it used its, it's like a spy. It used its language to fit in. It also used psychological language. It uses language that has to do with dealing with this illusion, but yet it's telling you that there's something beyond this illusion. But it still plays the game and uses the words that people, you could say, are most used to, but maybe at the same time that were most going to trigger people. Just let's just launch them into healing before they even read anything. Let's just, as soon as they read and go, he, oh, I'm triggered. He's like, great. That's what we want to do. Get all your stuff out. But when you can get past the stuff and you realize, God, you know, even if I know better, there are these programs that tell me, that tell me that yeah, God's going to burn me or something because I've been naughty. And the Father's saying, that is so foreign to me, you can't even hear my voice when I talk to you. Because you expect to hear something other than what I'm saying. I've said it many times, God's only message to humans who think they're here, I love you, come home. Now, you know, what would make you freaked out about that? Oh, I just know we're going to be in trouble. Well, wait. Stop and ask yourself, what, what did God say? And it always only says, I love you, come home. Did you hear any threat in there? Did you, any hear, did you hear, I love you, now get your butt back here because, oh, you're in trouble. No, that was dad in this life. <laughs> That was mom and dad who failed to be the perfect presence of our father, mother, God. So, so if that's not true, then maybe I am safe. I love you, come home. I didn't hear anything but it's love, I love you, come home. Why would you want to read anything into that? You could respond with, really? But don't respond by running. It doesn't make any sense. You know, if you're a little skeptical because of issues, really? And you'll hear again, I love you, come home. Are you sure? I love you, come home. Now, when we say, well, but I have guilts and shames and regrets and things that don't resonate with being home. You can't, you can't get to heaven while having non-heaven-like consciousness. 
And God understands that. So God's saying, you know, listen, honey. Yes, honey. Father, mother, God. Um, I've been trying to send a message to the kids. I love you. Come home. But they won't open the email. Because it said, from God. And they're like, oh, man. I want to hide. I don't know how he found me. But, but I need to hide. I don't want him to find Because I know when I open it. Church told me what it's going to say. Pack your bags. You're going to hell. You know? And so I don't want to open the email because I can just pretend I never got it. You know, like a bad legal letter, right? I, well, what legal letter? I never saw that. So we try that with God. And he's saying, so honey, can you do me a favor? She says, yes. Because she is our, the womb, the cosmic womb holding us. So even though the father seems out here, he speaks to the womb that holds us and says, they can't hear me. They won't open the emails. Would you? Yes, honey, I got it. I'll, I'll take care of that. So she's here with us, completely integrated with us. She's not buying into anything. She's never bought into anything having power over us. But she does see that we believe things have power. So when we cry and say, I, I can't pay this bill, I, I can't get past this wound that somebody gave me, you know, this, this trauma, her, her approach isn't, oh, that's terrible, that's bad, those people are going to hell. It's always, how can I help? And when we commit to healing, she helps create the healers, the right words, the right techniques. When we say, I'm, I'm wanting to gain prosperity, she's going to say, well, sweetheart, how can I help? Well, send us checks in the mail. She's going to say, well, the only, way, the only way I can help you is by changing consciousness. If I give you what you think you need, then it'll affirm and confirm you didn't have it. So I can't add to your illusions. Will not, but even cannot. How can I add to your consciousness instead? So our prayers are not supposed to be those things we sometimes do. Guess what? I was praying for a check and God gave me. God never is, you know, ka -ching and, and sending out checks to people like in the mail, like we think. Sometimes those synchronicities happen because the Holy Mother, the Divine Mother, is seeing that in us there was a willingness to change consciousness. That's why you got the check. It was never about the Holy Spirit giving you stuff. She helps materialize it, but she can't do that if your consciousness doesn't change. She can't give you a consciousness that you are not owning. It doesn't make sense. She can't make me into you, you into me. It makes no sense. She can't give you the, you know, the, the complete consciousness of Christ, for that matter, without us being willing to step into that consciousness. So... Look at all the, the peculiar ways that we've pushed things out. When I talked about the relationship with God, and I talked about the father aspect of God, somebody messaged us last week and says, but what about the mother? I'm talking about the mother. Never is there one without the other, really, in consciousness or in my conversations. The mother is, in a sense, it's the active part of God. You know, where, where God is, is a consciousness that doesn't, I know it sounds strange, but just doesn't buy into any of this illusion. The mother is the one saying, I'll take care of it. The father, metaphorically, the father is like, I've got to go to work. The mother is, I'll get them to school. I'll take care of them. I'll fix them lunch. We're not talking gender, and I'm not, males are up and females are down, and you've got to be the housewife. It has nothing to do with that. But it's not an accident. It's not an accident that the genders took on those stereotypes. Because the women knew the role of the Divine Mother is to take care. You see? The father accidentally, or was it an accident, seems to be a little more distanced from the children in our many years and generations of that lifestyle. Do you remember that? Yes, it's shifting, but it's not just because it's shifting because women are fighting. It's shifting because the women, as they own the masculine, that all that stereotype disappears. You see? John Lennon chose to be with his kids all the time. They're like, well, why aren't you recording music? Because I'm a dad. What do you mean a dad? Rock stars go on tour and ignore their kids. And he, you know, he's at home with his kids. People didn't understand it. That was his bliss. And in a way you could say that's when he started embracing the feminine in himself. A feminine that he hated throughout all the years that we were like, cool, this guy's all about love, peace. No. He was a very angry person. Very hateful person. You know? The song, uh, It's Getting Better All the Time by the Beatles. He's the one that inserted the one part in the Paul McCartney song. He inserted, I used to be cruel to my woman. I beat her and kept her apart from the things that she loves. 
Man, I was mean, but I'm changing my scene and I'm doing the best that I can. That was his insertion. Because he was saying, man, I've, I've been a real jerk. And this thing about love that they were starting to get into, he's starting to see the contrast. I was this typical angry male, and I don't mean guys have a problem, I'm using the stereotypes just to play with that, and I'm getting it. It's getting better all the time. So this is a dance, this is an embrace, but really we're all heading for that marriage with the Christ. It's just a, a term, it's a name that we have such issues with. And for me, I really love the way love is. It, you know, I'm a spiritual leader, so, uh, and male, and, you know, there's different things you can tag on to me if you need. But all of those things, even in this earth plane, they still become things that are, you have to dance with. So if I had my druthers, you know, I see the world that we're going into, which is the world of Eden, which is in the 60s, we started having, it was birthing, and people were talking about it, singing about it, as an ideal to get to. We're actually reaching it more. But that, that, that place where I, Michael, can say to people, I love you. I love saying I love you, but I can almost never say it. Mm -hmm. What a peculiar thing. I love saying it, and it's totally right, and it's totally organic. But because I'm a spiritual leader, I have to be careful because there's a role and it gets misinterpreted. You know? So it's really weird, but there's times. There's times when I can see where where we've dropped labels in moments of, and I'm so grateful for those moments. I've seen, you know, we can hug each other. I've seen people kiss each other. And when I first came here, there was a, a beautiful a name, a woman here in the front seat. She always sat, Laura, some of you remember. And she was, she was like a first thing, a first gratitude I felt because Laura used to sit there and uh, she was an African-American woman who was like, you know, 90 or whatever. And she was just feisty and great. She was so real. Where, where I couldn't, I love you, and I couldn't kiss or hug at people, you know, because it looks weird. I'd walk by her, and she'd always grab my butt when I walked by to give my <laughs> You know? <laughs> and I would say, you know, was that you again? She, only me, baby. <laughs> you can always count on that. She'd just have this, you know, while I go give my talk, you know? Um, but that woman... You know, she didn't just, you know, nice to see you, church lady. She always dressed fine, but go to give her a hug. She'd always kiss me on the lips. Oh, oh, oh. oh what's wrong with that? You know, um, it, was, it was funny. It was great. But it, I just, at the same time, I knew somebody out there is going, you know, having funny thoughts about it. But she was, she was old enough to make it okay for some people. For some reason, that made it okay. And I laughed at it because I'm laughing at the fact that they have some reason that they think it's okay. It should be okay no matter what. But we do have to take responsibility and get ourselves out of the garbage that makes reasons for it not to be okay. So I'm not pushing that we should go there. I'm pushing that we need to work on our stuff and not have the hooks and agendas related to that. But how beautiful it is. And I'm grateful that as when I developed friendships you know, starting many years ago, we could do that. We could say, I love you. And they could understand that it meant everything. It means I respect you. It means I know you've gone through a lot, but please know that you're loved. It meant all kinds of things. It never, ever meant love you, hooking. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> it just meant download of love, download of, of love. And that when people get kind of tripped out about this relationship, Jesus and Magdalene, you know, he's the Christ. He's Jesus. He's a spirit. He's a, he's a rabbi. He's a master. Kissing and he was doing the same thing. He would be affectionate. So affection is one of the last things, vestiges of the old ego world that have to fall aside. The lack of affection. Affection's an issue that has to come out of the dark ages. But it is up to us to make that safe. We have screwed it up here and there. There are moments when we thought selfishly, acted selfishly. We have to learn to become so clean, the no agenda self, and let that come out. Then it's going to be safe. And am I talking about a world where, you know, we'll definitely know we're home when we can finally hug and kiss? It's not about the physical. It's about the allowance of it. It's not that we will do it. It's that we can do it and not have issues about it. So it's not, otherwise you have another religion. This new religion where everybody hugs and kisses. No, now you have a thing again. <laughs> Back to a thing. No, what about how cool this is? 
You know, in the old days, if you had issues you wanted to talk about, in one generation ago, if not in our generation, you were considered crazy if you needed to go see a counselor. Crazy to see a counselor. Now it's like, yeah, who are you seeing? <laughs> it's just common. But in our generation and or one before us, it, it's considered crazy. Because it's so, for the old school, the old religious thinkers, it's so foreign, the idea of coming out. But you've got to come out. So where now we see somebody, you know, uh, crying and we hold them, to that other world, it's like, that's inappropriate. You don't even know them. See, and in God, I do. The Divine Mother is asking me to hold, because I, I am an, I'm a manifestation of the Divine Mother. You're a guy, what do you mean? See, that's the old school, can't hear it. But the mother is matter. Mother is matter. So in this moment, if somebody's crying and I become the material thing to hold her, I'm the mother manifested as matter to hold this person. Don't keep talking, you know, God, send somebody to help them. God says, I did. You. They need a tissue. Could you, you mind handing them a tissue? But I don't know them. This could offend them. And then God's saying, well, it sounds like you have bigger issues than they do. So who are we going to get now for you to, to help you work through your stuff? <laughs> so in closing, I'm going to share a little reading with you. Um, this comes from an old uh, uh, book, but before I get to that place, um, I just want to share that, ah, oh, you know, get the feeling of what I'm saying. Get that vibe. Something I shared last week is that we keep trying to do like a spiritual bypass. We keep trying to jump to a place of thinking we know, but there's so many things we're afraid, you know, like the name of Christ. Things we're afraid of, things we're triggered by, which is hypocrisy then. Spiritual bypass is always hypocrisy. Trying to pretend you're here when in fact you have all these issues you don't want to talk about is just attempting to bypass the stuff in between here and there. You know, the, the place of ground to the place of complete enlightenment. Because it can't happen. You, can't, you can pretend you're enlightened, but that's bypass. It's just, it's deception, self-deception. So, a story I shared in the second service last week, um, I want to share again in this one, because a lot of people really dug it, and I'd like to share it with those watching as well. It's the, the story about life is like being out on a boat. You liked that one? So life is like being out on a boat. And we find that we're navigating the, the, the waters of life. But at some point, what happens to the typical human being is the boat slows down and we don't know why. And that's because when we, when we learn to be responsible and heal, we go in and we say, why are you afraid to love? It's all a metaphor, navigating the waters of life. Why are you afraid to love? Why are you afraid to come out? Why are you afraid to whatever it is? Why are you afraid to become prosperous? I don't know, I just am. It's never just am. It's always issues. That's why forgiveness is behind everything as an answer. But in the metaphor, the boat stops, and what's happened is, God help me, God help me, God help me. And so let's pretend God shows up on the deck of the ship. What's happening? I'm afraid. Yeah, I see that. You're not moving through your life anymore. You're no longer loving. Affection is out of the question. You have all kinds of reasons for it, but it's, it's bogus. You stopped. Well, because metaphorically, there are these mines, water mines, floating in the waters, and you know that if you continue to move, those binds are going to blast your ship apart. That's how we live. If I try to come out, somebody's going to criticize. If I get a divorce, my mother will never talk to me again. If ever, if ever, and, and those are all the ifs, the maybes, the, the, the fears in the water. They're mines ready to blow us up. So God says, would you like some help? Yes, I would. All right, I have, I have a solution. What I'm going to have you do is sit and just chill. Really? I don't have to do anything. All you have to do, God's telling you and I, just chill. Because God, the Holy Spirit, is going to go into the depths of your consciousness and find those minds and let them go so that you can navigate. Doesn't that make sense? That's what prayer is. Help me, Holy Spirit of God, release those minds so that I can move through life. Perfect. That's the same as saying, help me with my fears, help me purge out my childhood issues, etc. Okay, perfect plan. So we're ready to go, and all of a sudden... The person on the deck, you and I, boom, boom, we're hearing all these explosions. So one minute we were feeling semi-confident God's taking care of us, but all of a sudden explosions and the boat's rocking, and oh my God, this is worse than when I was just stuck. So we're scared, scared, screaming, God, God, God. God rematerializes, 
What? D didn't you see what happened? I mean, I was sitting here. You told me to trust you. And all these explosions were happening. All these explosions all around me. And the boat's rocking and water's splashing. It was worse than when I started. This is what we do with God. I got on the path and things started getting worse. God says, okay, maybe you didn't read the manual I gave you on this, but <laughs> when you ask me to go inside and start releasing the stuff that keeps you stuck in your life, those bombs will come to the surface and explode. I know that's an inconvenience, but they're going to explode. They're just let them. They're just things exploding. They're not going to harm you. I wouldn't let that happen, but I do have to allow your stuff to surface. Okay? And we react. And so God is saying to you and I, and to you and me, if you react, you will actually not only re-anchor the bombs that just exploded, you'll now create new ones. The ones that were there have to come back, but even new ones, because now you feel guilty for reacting. So new bombs get added. So healing could be dangerous, if we don't do it right, if we don't, don't realize it takes trust, it takes courage. So our stuff has to surface. We have to be willing. If you say, help me with my issues with men, how is it not going to happen that you'll start having memories of males that were not very nice? Well, I wish that didn't happen. But it's part of a, ooh, what's that? On its way out. Boom, boom, little splash here and there, little this and that, a little feeling, the boat rocks. Breathe. Breathe and know that when you enter the path of healing, when you enter the path of waking up, something wonderful is happening. It doesn't feel like it, especially at first. But something wonderful is happening and you are having a relationship again with God. And you're trusting that God, when it helps you in the healing process, may have to allow things to surface, but never are you in danger in this process. But it'll seem like it. The booms and the booms, they seem like you're in danger, but never are we actually in danger. So I'm going to close with reading a quote, um, actually some tidbits, from a book uh, a, a person gave to me a long time ago. And I was going to actually share this last week, but I saved it for this week now for some reason. And ironically, I saw that I think the author is, is on the, the, the Facebook page of mine, and I noticed some other students has have been posting quotes. So all this happening this week that this came full circle. This is quotes from a book called The Heart of Love, Mary Magdalene Speaks by Gail Swanson. Hello, Gail, if you're watching. So try to hear and feel this as part of our meditation today. Okay? Try to hear this and feel this. This is a romantic, spiritually romantic love being shared between what seems like a, the woman to the male, the Mary to the Christ, or to Jesus, to you and God. Try to hear how beautiful this is. If only you could hear the sound of his voice or know his touch. I speak of him with utmost devotion and love. For it was he that showed me the divinity that reigned within he came to show us not only who he was, but who we are. Walking with him, talking with him, looking at him, caring for him, being completely mesmerized by him. The way he looked, the way he spoke, the way he walked. You could just drink him in. All else paled in comparison. If he was out of your sight, you could still feel him, but your eyes would grieve, for he is all they wished to see. Living became a dream with harsh interruptions of reality. His eyes were blue, the kind of blue you just could get lost in. His voice seemed to come from another place, for it went completely into you and filled you. He was firm in his words, but ever so loving. The love that was emanating from him either captured you or turned you away. He was full of joy. He was very lighthearted. He could be easily annoyed as well for the bickering and pettiness, but he always forgave it. The way he loved the woman, the women, was not understood and infuriated many. 
The women just adored him. They were lifted up on high and could feel the truth. There are things taking place of which you are not aware, shifts in energies coming forth to facilitate peace and love and a great light, if only you will choose. Some will be angered for the message is strong and the vibration it carries frightens those who are layered with guilt and shame. He was mostly so patient, but there were times when he would answer strongly. He was aware of what was needed, yes, but he wearied at times. What transpired when he would speak, it would be as if an invisible force would just envelop you and the whole world would fall away and you knew, you absolutely knew you were hearing and participating in something not of this world. There was a woman who came to him in great distress but afraid to tell him of her true plight for she was mistreated and not shown love and she lived in despair and loneliness. So he told her of the love that was all around her and he touched her and glorified her with his infinite love. He told her of the light that dwells within. He told her to find it and let none take this from her ever. And in his heart, she felt pure love and on this day, she lifted her face, received his blessing and all was made new. Oftentimes, a sadness would come upon him and he would feel overwhelmed. Because of this, he understands all human emotions. He was not exempt from feelings, feeling these things, but he would pray and ask for guidance and his faith would help him continue. Stay silent, eyes closed, and now start receiving your own similar message. What would you continue writing if that was your writing? What is your description of your relationship? The divine romance. Be poet, be songwriter, be, be spontaneous, and let it keep happening. Keep describing deeply your relationship with the Christ. How does he feel? How does he interact with you? The strength of his words, yet the sensitivity. Just keep playing with that for a moment. Feel the effect in your body. Feel that you don't have to hold yourself as much, hold yourself up. Feel how defenses can sort of fall away. I feel less guarded. I feel open. If there is a, a part of the body or a chakra that, that aches or tightens, see it and love into it. Feel him standing before that part of the body and just blowing the Spirit of God into it, giving a blessing to it. There's no reason for aches in any part. It's resistance, so just let me breathe the breath of life into your being. I don't need to fight. I don't need to resist. I welcome the light of God. Give thanks quietly in your own way, but as you're giving thanks, feel as though this is integrated. It's not something that was said to you or happened to you. Feel like it's something that experience, was experienced within you. I just had this awakening. I just had this experience. I feel wed with the Christ self, which is an expression of God. I'm already opening up to that, that marriage, as it were, the divine alchemical marriage. And if there be any resistance, I give it to the Holy Spirit to lift up and away. And so it is.
How's everybody feel? Good. Good. And that's even kind of the energy that we're having. And if you want to stay for this afternoon workshop, you're welcome to do that. Just talk to the office about signing up for it. But that's the energy. It's like that. This relationship with the Christ. Not with a person out there, but the Christ. And at first it seems like it's with Jesus or something like that. But at some point, and under, even with Jesus' own blessings, it becomes our own relationship with the Christ. You might call it something at first. I said a couple of weeks ago, as long as you think you're a person, a who, then you're, you're going to need another who to pretend it's a what so that you can recognize and see these new aspects of yourself. So, you know, Jesus says, I'm the Christ, but if you need a who, I'll be Jesus so that you have something to look at. But eventually you're going to recognize what you really are and you won't need a who. Down in Whoville. <laughs> All right. As I'm closing... Um, there's, a, there's a, a great song by a band called Savage Garden. And I'm only going to share the first few lines of it, and I'm sort of paraphrased, but it's really a funny one because it's... You know, every once in a while, I spend my time and talk about silly things. I like to shoot the breeze, he says in the song. Talk about silly things. But I like to talk about Jesus Christ because I wonder what would happen if he passed you by. Would you be scared? Would you believe in him? Would you bust your asses to get him institutionalized? <laughs> you know? Um, but I bet he'd be cool. I bet he'd be damn good looking. And I bet that he would smell divine. I'm not talking about Calvin Klein's obsession. Just one of those people who smell good all the time and there's no reason why. This is the words of the song. What would he wear? Would he wear, wear Tommy Hilfiger? Would he, he you know... Urban Outfitter, he says that in the song. He goes, you know, would he wear this? Would he, Tommy Hilfiger, would he be an Urban Outfitter? He goes, you know what? I bet he'd like Gautier. But you'd never find him in it. But I bet he'd like him. And, and so he ends it with, but I don't think so. It's like, you know, you put all the human features to him. You know, there's even a part where he says, I bet he'd be an Oprah and blah, blah. And he goes, but you know what? I don't think so. Because there's the part of, God, I bet he would be this and that. Would he, what would he wear? Would he, 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 you know, again, the relationship, because he goes into the chorus. Lord, I need your protection. Spend some time in my direction. And he repeats that over and over. But, you know, he's, he's saying, what do you think about when you think about Christ or Jesus passing you? But what do you think about? Would you be scared? Would you believe in him? What would you do? How would you respond? And then he goes to the practical level of what would he wear? You think he'd still show up in a row? Possible. You know, but he'd kind of stand out too much. So what would he wear? Would it be a designer this? And would he have, you know, the, the finest watches? I, I don't think so, he says. But we can have this relationship. Just don't expect it to always fit what the mind thinks how it's going to fit. Just, and, and when you even try that, say, you know what, I don't know. The more we do I don't know, the more expansive the experience can become. Because I didn't put it in a box and say, listen, Jesus Christ, Mother Mary, whatever, you know, uh, I want you to enter my life and here's the receptacle I want you to fit into. I want you to be square, triangular, this, that, male, female. The I don't know allows it to be everything to us. Okay? All right, thanks. We're going to do our closing song first, our, um, our um, collection. And, and by the way, it, those of you who are local... But also those of you who might be out and about, look up on the internet a guy named Brother Gregorio. Brother Gregorio. Wonderful soul. Amazing healing techniques he uses. He's in Sedona this week, so if you're interested, look him up and, and might be able to get the number from the office if you call. But he's only here for a few days. But try to get scheduled for a session. But um, if even if you're out and about, he was just in Southern California, he goes to Atlanta, wherever you're watching from, be aware in case he comes to your area, get signed up while you can, usually because it's only a few days and they, they fill up quite quickly. And lastly, please remember this. This is the last time I think we can announce it, that Wednesday night, this Wednesday night starts in person here or live through the internet, the Creating Fulfilling Relationships class. It's fulfilling relationships with all life. All beings, God, self, others, it's this whole complete 
holistic, experiential, you know, process. So join us if you can. Sign up. It's Wednesday night. It's only for a few weeks. So join us if you can. And now's the time to do that. I think it's discounted by like a hundred. It's only a couple hundred bucks, but or 150 or something. But it's quite a bit more if you don't sign up within the next, you know, hours or day or whatever it is. But just call. They'll honor the, the lower price from last week. Call and get signed up as soon as you can. Okay? Good. Now, join in this prayer even if you don't know the words. It's on the front of your bulletins. Or we'll pray this and you can hear this from wherever you are. Sometimes we post that on the feed so you can read it there. And then we'll do our closing song. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am. All that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. Remember, it multiplies all of that. Always willing to grow and expand for us. All right. Thank you. Now, as they're passing these around, and for the folks online too, can you share what did you hear, learn, experience today that was the most important or effective for you? Tune into that. What did you most need to and enjoy hearing? Yes? Well, when they asked us to um, talk to Jesus again, mine was that he mm. forgave me. Good. So it was more like I was there to be crucified. <laughs> well, wow. Wow. Mm. Right on, right on. So in the part she's saying, in the part where I said at the end, just try to hear your own your words, your own guidance, um, continuing that. How did you like the reading from that material? Isn't that deep? It's just beautiful. Again, that's Gail Swanson, The Heart of Love, Mary Magdalene Speaks. Yes? I would like to thank you for sharing all of your heart. Thanks. With me and everybody else. No, it's all right, man. Thank you very much. Just giving thanks for, you know, sharing my heart. Yeah, and you too. It makes a difference, you know, when I see the and feel the open hearts of her. I can just kind of drop in and be more and more, you know, what I what I love being. So I, I appreciate the permission you all give me. You. Yes, you're welcome. Love takes many forms. Don't judge yeah. by your eyes and what you see. Love takes many forms. Don't judge with the eyes. Least of all the eyes, you know, mm -hmm. what you see, yes. Just say, I don't know. Possibilities are limitless. Possibilities become limitless when we learn to say, I don't know. I don't know sounds demeaning in some way, but the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. You say you know, then that's all you can ever know. Say, I don't know, and you can keep getting filled. That's what I do when I stand here. I don't know. Here we go. And then it just starts <laughs> happening. If I stood here and says, I'm a fine teacher. I studied this and that. You know, let me just repeat it to you, well, you can go home and read the book of whatever I'm reading and you can maybe figure that out yourself. I love to say I don't know and then let what needs to come through come through. Yes? When you shared about the fact that God uncovers and that we're going through a healing process, that gave me a rest because I was trying to get somewhere and not realizing that God is, is kind of, well, my dad used to say, peeling off another layer of the onion. Right. Right on, you're welcome. And thank you for that. But that whole process of trusting God, the explosions and all, trusting God and keep going with it. Yeah. Yes? Your story about Laura. Mm -hmm. oh. You know, what I love about that is she was a self. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what age she decided to be herself, whether she was always like that or came later. And yeah. that's what's been happening in my life. I'm accepting nice. more and more and more of all those parts of me that you push down. Right. Right on. You know that story. Right on. I got a lot of years yet to 90, but I think I was start a lot earlier. <laughs> she, dug, she dug the story of Laura that I shared about how she was herself. And and uh, when do, do, did she get that? I think at like three months old. <laughs> I, I mean, I think she was kind of attitudinal all her life. She was always, but in a good way. The sassy, the, she was honest. And, and there are people from all over the world that she knew, touched, shared with, that nobody even knows. And then when we had her celebration of life, there were people from all over the world going, yeah, she was my mom. I'm like, oh, okay, well, then another, she was my mom. Um, it took me a minute to catch on. 
she became like the mother to many, um, from orphans to troubled homes to whatever, friends. Um, she just became that presence, uninhibited that presence. And I never saw her resist that at all. And she was told, we were actually told by the medical association, this woman is going to pass away anytime because she's sick. So they gave us a paper to be aware if it happens, here's what to do. And it was like a few years later, we were still talking to her. She was still here. Like, they, they said she's supposed to be dead. She was like, I don't care what they say. I ain't going anywhere. She was supposed to be dead. And she just kept living. And went way past what they said. You know, and, and it's like, only when she was done. I mean, it was amazing. The, this, the, the mind power she had that she told everybody to have. And man, she was just... And she was physically beautiful. She was. She was actually beautiful. Amazing, perfectly smooth skin. Th you know, thin and, and always dressing fine. Just inside and out. Just really, really beautiful. <clears throat> and, <laughs> you know, she would hear, you know, and you, you think... Here's the, the master, you know. She's like a, the master for a lot of people, you know. She would be in the back room. She'd come in the back for a minute and help out with things sometimes. And, and she would hear um, somebody struggling and somebody, you know, was being real mean to somebody else. And she didn't always just do the, oh, forgive them. They know not. She just goes, well, they're just assholes. <laughs> you know, and you just go, whoa. That's her way of saying, forgive them. They know not what they do. <laughs> You know, so she just throw out this, you know, curse, and it's like, oh, thank God she said it, because we're all thinking it. <laughs> Cut it boom. Okay, last hand or two. She's thanking you right now. Yeah, right? Right? And, and, and incidentally, I was on tour once in um, Salem, Massachusetts. And, well, I was on tour near there, and I went through Salem, and there was a woman that was willing, she wanted to give a reading. And it, well, like a couple of friends that were with me, they wanted to get readings, so we went, we found somebody that was real well known there, and they got readings. And I said, oh, would you like to do one for me? Would you mind? You know, and she said, no. But in the reading she gave, and I didn't put it together, she said, there's someone African American that's very close to you, and right now is giving you all the support. And I was like, African American, and I'm thinking, I, I could think of nobody that, that's like, like close or whatever. I mean, when I was in high school, we had a handful of African Americans at my school, but only a handful, and those were my friends. You know, I was naturally, I was actually born in Compton, you know, so the LA's version, it was the, the black region. So, so I'm thinking, well, that was always something I was fine with, but that, that's still not it. What could it be? And I couldn't sort it out, and it was shortly thereafter that I realized she had only passed away like a month or two before. And I went, it's Laura. It's Laura. I'm, all, I'm thinking, wow. And I wouldn't have even thought of myself as being significant enough to her to, that she would be choosing to be like a guide to me. I wouldn't have thought of, you know. But what an honor. And we made her then an honorary chaplain oh. at Unity of Sedona. Yeah. We have a certificate up in the chapel with her name on it. Yes. Everywhere you've been, you, you knew her and she was mentoring. And she was always there for me. Absolutely. She guided me and gave me guidance that I use to this day. And yeah. Right now, a personal friend of mine, Scotty, who lives here in Sedona, um, who I, I come to see and, and, and wow. help and, and do things with, uh, through Scotty, I've met Laura. Right. Nice. Um, You'll notice something about the woman, though, nurturing. But when she needed to be firm, she would tell it like it is. So there again, it's not masculine, feminine, it's integrated. But she could play a little of this one or that one as was needed. And don't forget that. That's what mastery looks like. Don't be one or another. Be on an as-needed basis. Or as one apostle said, I am all things to all people. Meaning, whatever's needed, I'm there. Let's do our closing song. Sorry. Yes. When you gave her a ride home, you didn't give her a favor. She blessed you. Right. 
giving her a ride home or whatever, right? It's like you, you, were, you were thinking you were doing something for her when you were really along for the ride with her. <laughs> in life and love, whatever, you know. Um, so I want to say goodbye to the folks joining us live. Uh, we say goodbye because the songs that we use are often copyrighted, so we can't include you on the closing song. Um, but we can tell you that it's All You Need Is Love. <laughs> Today's song, All You Need Is Love. Thank you, and peace be with all of you, and thanks for joining us. <laughs>